Good day to you, it's Marty Westley and uh, I'm very glad that to have you on this journey that we are taking to search for the truth. So I hope that you will be blessed with me. Good day to you, it's Marty Westley. Today we're starting a brand new lecture and it's the Feast of Hanukkah or what John speaks about in the Bible, the Feast of Dedication. And, and of course, Yeshua kept all the feasts. He went, there wasn't a feast that he didn't keep. And so we start here again. All scriptures used are from the Hebrew Bible, Old King James, uh, Dax Annotated Reference Bible and Esword. Any italics, underlining, brackets and words made bold have been added, including all the English and Greek names for God, the Lord, the Hearer, Jesus and Christ changed into the original Hebrew. And so we're going to look at Daniel eleven twenty one to 32 today. And it refers to Antiochus, the fourth, called Epiphanes, who reigned 175 to 163 BC. So, and in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant, the prince that was promised, the Messiah. It says, and it shall be broken. And this 23 says, and after the league, this league speaks about a a covenant being made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with the small people. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province, and he shall do what his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and the spoil and the riches. Yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. So here you see when Yeshua speaks like this or the Bible speaks like this, it doesn't matter what happens before time. But when the time of God comes, the appointed time, there's nothing that will be able to stop it. Then shall he return into his land with great riches and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. So it shows you that somewhere in the future, this whole thing here will happen again. It speaks of two fulfillments. For the ships of Shittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. And so shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. 
So here you can rest assured there will be a forsaking of the Holy Covenant because Daniel was a wonderful prophet. An arm shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their Elohim shall be strong and do exploits. So that's a, a good encouragement for even for us, especially for today. Here we see that plus minus 160 years before Yeshua was born, Antiochus Epiphanes, ruler of Syria, overcame Israel killing 40,000 Jews and sold many as slaves and he became ruler in Jerusalem. He broke into the Holy of Holies and took all the gold vessels away and also all the other sacred treasures. He prohibited Jewish worship, the sacrifices, Sabbaths and circumcision, etc. He made the temple desolate of divine worship he consecrated Yahweh's temple to Jupiter Olympus and he offered a pig on Yahweh's altar and desecrated it. He erected an idol in the temple and all Jews were to bow before it and all had to become one religion. The old and weak were disposed of. Greek culture was taking over everywhere and man became the center of the universe. Hence, the body became so important, just as it is today. Many Jews accepted this way, and even the Greek language became the order of the day. It was very difficult for, for the Jews under the rule of Antiochus. The chapter in Daniel 11 from 21-32, as I've said, as a later fulfillment also, speaking about the anti-Mashiach, the counterfeit of Yeshua in the latter years. And this, these are the years that we are living in now. Then Judas Maccabee and his five sons rose up against Antiochus, and all Israel followed them. The Maccabees were scholars from the tribe of Libby. They knew the word and understood the covenant of Yahweh. And after five major battles, they won with Yahweh's help. It took them plus minus four years. And so they cleansed the temple and consecrated it, but for the menorah, they only found enough sacred oil to burn for one night for the rededication of the temple. They lit the menorah on the 25th of Kislev, our December, just after 6 p.m. when the 25th began and it carried on burning for eight days and nights. And you know, when you look at, <laughs> at the menorah that was built, they had to clean the lamps every morning because there was only, those pipes could only take uh, one night's burning, or one day and a night's burning. And here, it carried on burning for eight days and nights without refilling. Hanukkah means dedication or the Feast of Lights. They would sing an old hymn, Rock of Ages, and would praise Yahweh for the miracle that happened. Remember the scripture in Isaiah 7:14. It says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Elohim with us. Isaiah 9 to 6 says, The people that walked in darkness, these were the people in Galilee, have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. A son is given in the Hebrew is El Matan, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Wonderful is Pele. Marvelous, remarkable, miracle. And Pele, when you read it from the left to the right, 
it reads Ale. Now we know that the Aleph represents Yahweh, the first letter of the Alephate. Counselor is your arts, and it means to advise, consult, to guide. The mighty God, I El Gibor, the powerful, the mighty champion, the strong conquering Elohim, the everlasting Father, Aav Ha'olam, the Father of Eternity, the Planner of the Ages, the Prince of Peace, Asa Shalom, the Prince, Ruler of Peace, the Promoter of Peace, Favor and Prosperity. Isaiah 9 7 says, of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahweh Tzavuot, or Yahweh of hosts, will perform this. Let's look at the word increase. Is Lamarve. It is written with a, a mem next to the L, but it's a closed mem. It is a mem that you, you, it's only written at the end of a word. But here it is the second word which is not done. It means greatness, a multitude of offspring. To order it is kun to erect, to set up forever, and he will govern over many countries. To establish it, and this word means never to waver or slip, but to be unshakable for all eternity. Down the centuries, the Hebrew scribes were dedicated to copy the Torah scrolls with the greatest of care. They could not make their own cor corrections or change any detail even correct the most obvious mistakes. And so here in these scriptures, which should have been written with an ordinary open mem, speaking of a closed womb, a miracle child. An ancient Hebrew commentary states that the closed mem refers to the Mashiach and he will be born from a closed womb. Isaiah 9, 8 says, and Yahweh sent a word into Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. Sent is shalach, sent like a messiah that cannot miss its mark, and where it lands, a growth will come forth like a branch. I believe this was when the light came into the world's atmosphere. Yeshua, the branch of righteousness, the light of the world, the son of Yahweh, came into Miriam's womb. It was time for the house of Judah to return to their land after the exile in Babylon to rebuild the temple because the Mashiach had to be born back in the land of Israel. Haggai was one of the first prophets to return after the Babylonian exile of the house of Judah and Zerubbabel was the governor of those who returned to Jerusalem to start the rebuilding of the temple of Yahweh. And Joshua, who is called Jehoshua, was chosen to be the first high priest. Haggai 2, 17 to 19 says, I smote you with blasting and with mildew and with hail in all the labors of your hands. Yet you turned not to me, says Yahweh. Consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, Kislev, our December, even from the day that the foundation of Yahweh's temple was laid, consider it, is the seed yet in the barn. Yea, as if the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree has not brought forth from this day, will I bless you. What is happening here? The problem with Judah was that they were so busy building their own homes when they came back, that they did not realize that Yahweh was unhappy with them. They had received no rain or harvest. They had no money. It was only after the third message through Haggai that they realized what they've done. 
and they started building the foundation of the temple. When was the temple's foundation laid? It was, remember the, the Hebrew day starts the night. So to, in our calendar, it's the 24th, and then it goes into the 25th of Kislev, uh, December. So the light came into Miriam's womb, and nine months later, on the day of Shofar's, the first of Tishri, Yeshua was born. He is also the headstone and the cornerstone of the renewed covenant temple. He also represented the seven arm menorah, the candlestick, the chandelier in the temple. The middle lamp is called Shamash, the servant lamp, also the Ne'er Elohim, the lamp of God. And the center shaft is called Yarech, and it means loins. Remember the Bible says, out of Jacob's loins came the twelve tribes of Israel. So out of the menorah's two sides, the six arms extended out of the left and the right side represent all believers in him. They were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. He said in the word, I am the light of the world. And then he said, you are the light of the world. The masculine name, Manor, means loom or yoke together like the menorah. Now Ephesians 1, 3 to 7 says, Blessed be the Elohim and Father of our Lord Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in HaMashiach, according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yeshua HaMashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Seeing that we were already in Yeshua before the foundation of the world, and we were in the menorah as Abraham's seed when Yahweh and Yeshua were cutting the covenant with Abraham, I believe it was at that time when they discussed the bride price. He would be called the man of grace. In Luke 1, 26, 35 says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from Elohim unto a city of Galilee named Nazaret. Nazaret means the keeper, the watcher, the protector of the branch. Nazar or Nazar. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Miriam. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favoured. Yahweh is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not Mary, or Miriam, for thou hast found favour with him. And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yeshua. He will say, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And Yahweh shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So that means that the Messiah in the end of the world will be the last king of Israel and he will rule the house of David in all the eternities to come. Then said Miriam unto the angel, 
How shall this be, seeing I know not the man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy, in our Bibles it's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, that holy thing is called the wa, uh, in the Greek, uh, word, in the Greek it's logos also, and word, um, expression or rhema, which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of Elohim. Luke 2, 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. It means Moshiach, which is Hamashiach, Yahweh. That is what the Aramaic Bible says. Zechariah 4, 2, verse 14 says, And said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof and two olive trees by it one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof and so I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me saying what are these my lord then, she, then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of Yahweh unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says Yahweh of hosts, Yahweh to God. Who art thou, a great mountain? Before the Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Now, who was the great mountain? It was Darius the Gidamid. He made a decree for Israel to stop working on the temple at that time. Remember the time of Nehemiah? It was all those people that complained about the building of the temple. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that Yahweh of hosts, Yahweh of Ota, has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of Yahweh which run to and fro through the whole world. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And then he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by Yahweh of the whole earth. Memorial means to mark, as to be recognized, to remember, to mention, to recount, record, be mindful. The house of Judah will always remember the great honor of bringing forth the son of Elohim who was given as a gift to save the world from their sins. Ephesians 2, 19, 22 says, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of Elohim and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Yeshua HaMashiach himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in Yahweh, in whom you also are builded together for an habitation of Elohim through the Spirit. 1 Peter 2, 6, 8 says, Therefore also it is contained in the scripture, the Torah, Isaiah 28 verse 16 
if you read that, you'll see this, these exact scriptures that I'm reading now. Behold, I lay in Sion, the chief cornerstone, elect precious. And he that believes on him shall not be confounded. And to you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Micah 5 2 says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So the prayer at Hanukkah, the dedication, is Ma'ot Tzur. Refuge, rock of my salvation, to you our praise is due. Let your house become a house of prayer and thanksgiving for all peoples. When by your will all bloodshed ends and enemies cease to scream hate, then we shall celebrate with joyful song the true dedication of your altar. Amen. We will end with this poem that I wrote after the Passover in 1983, A Father's Love. Can a father's heart forget the joy, the wondrous words that he's a boy, and then with gentle eyes to see him grow up as a man should be? Thirty years went by since then, but that was when it all began. He healed the sick and he raised the lame, he did it all in his father's name. The people came from far and wide to hear his word, to be by his side. He taught them how to love each other, not to hate, but to be a brother. But all too soon the soldiers came. Away with Yeshua, they shouted his name. To the cross he was nailed, accursed by all. On his lips the taste of gall. Can a heart endure such pain? to see his firstborn cruelly slain. Our great God's love for you and me, that he gave his son to set us free. Amen and Amen. Well, so for now, it's Marty Wesley signing off. Shalom, shalom. Thank you for joining me today on today's journey. Uh, I hope you will join me again next time. So, uh, shalom for today until I see you again.